Okay, so you need to make sure you've got a pen and or a pencil, or something to write with, something to write on. Give yourself a timer. Um, it can be a song you like, it can be off of a clock, whatever. Okay, so get those things and get ready for the next little bit. So hopefully you've got that stuff now. Your first job, your first job is to sketch and label this diagram. So pause the video and give a sketch of this diagram, say what it is and add some labels to it. So pause the video here. Okay, so um, here are my labels that I've put. Okay, so we've got wavelength. Now, when you've drawn your diagram, make sure it goes to the very top of that peak. Okay, the very top, the very center of it, not to the side, the very top of both sides. Okay, and that's the wavelength from one point of the wave to the same point on the next wave. Okay, amplitude is here. Again, you want from the equilibrium line all the way to that highest displacement. We've got a second wavelength at the bottom. We've got a second wavelength here, and the same rules apply. We need to go from where it crosses to the, not that one, but to the next where it crosses. Okay, and this is distance. If you label this equilibrium, you can give yourself a mark as well, but it was really distance because it's next to where that um, where the arrow is, it's the axis. Okay, but you can call it that zero displacement would be the equilibrium position. Okay, so this week we're carrying on with our energy resources. We're looking at three new ones. Well, three and a bit new ones. So first we've got biofuel. Now biofuel, um, all it means is a fuel from biology. So something that was living relatively recently. So it's either going to be growing some kind of crop and burning it. So growing trees and burning the trees or growing a crop and then converting it into some type of fuel. So you could grow corn and then you could make alcohol with that corn. Or you could use crops, feed them to animals and then use animal poo and burn the poo. Okay, these are all examples of biofuels. But the process is, is, is the same. You take that fuel, you burn it, you transfer that chemical store into heat. Okay, and that heat is transferred to water, which is then going from liquids to steam. The steam takes up more space, it will then be pushed through a turbine, that turbine spins, it's connected to a generator, which gives us electricity. Okay, um, it's carbon neutral, I'm going to come to what that means, because it can be a little bit confusing um, in the next slide, but it's carbon neutral as an advantage. It won't add carbon dioxide or carbon to the atmosphere. Okay, it's reliable. It's, it's reliable. You know how much electricity you're going to be able to generate with the biofuel. Okay. However, it's hard to quickly increase the amount of electricity. There's only certain, a certain amount of electricity you'll be able to generate from one biofuel plant. There's only a certain amount of crops you'll be able to quickly grow. Okay. So it's reliable, but it's slow to change. Okay. You have to spend some time to actually change how much electricity you'll get, generate out of it. It is renewable. Okay. It won't run out. Disadvantages, it does, it can produce um, polluting gases, not carbon dioxide necessarily because it's carbon neutral, but it could produce sulfur dioxide or nitri nitri nitrous, nitrogen oxides, um, which can contribute to acid rain. Okay, it's probably the least of the important of the disadvantages. It's expensive in terms of water and space because they need you need land to grow the crops, you need land to, to, to create this biofuel. OK, so it's expensive in terms of space and then water because you need to you need water to, to, to grow the crops. OK, so you'll need to get water to those crops so they grow well. Um, that land that it takes up could have been used for, to make food. So it will reduce the space available to grow crops for food to eat. OK, and um, lots of types will emit methane. So when you're farming cows, OK, they will emit methane. And that's an important that's a very powerful greenhouse gas. Okay, so those are some advantages and disadvantages of biofuels. Um, but carbon neutral, this is what it what it means by carbon neutral. So we can start at any point in this cycle, but it makes sense to start with the sun. We take the sun and we use crops to take that energy and we convert it into a chemical store. Okay, with photosynthesis. The crops make seeds. Seeds can be then used to make oil. You can refine that oil and then you can turn that oil into a biodiesel and some other products as well, but into biodiesel. That biodiesel can be put into a bus. That transfers the energy into mechanical energy, into kinetic energy. 
and it gives out carbon dioxide, which is used by the plants in photosynthesis. So we're adding energy to this cycle all the time. Okay, we're transferring energy from the sun into chemical stores, then into a kinetic store. But the amount of carbon we're putting in isn't changing in the atmosphere because all the carbon that we're generating by burning the biodiesel, we're using in photosynthesis. So it's not adding extra carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. So this shouldn't contribute to global warming. Okay, it's carbon neutral. It doesn't create, it doesn't remove any carbon from the atmosphere, but it doesn't add any extra. Okay. Now, next type, we've got fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas. Okay. Now, they're, they're lumped together as fossil fuels. They, they were around millions of years ago. Some longer, some more recent. Okay. But they're fossils. They used to be alive. Okay. Um, they're cheap to produce power. So once you've built the power station, it's relatively cheap to keep it running and to produce a lot of electricity from it. Okay. And they work in a similar way to the biofuels where we've got a, the fuels fed into a boiler, transfers the chemical energy to um, heat that heats the water up, water's turned to steam, which drives a turbine, which is linked to a generator, which um, transfers electricity to the national grid, goes into our homes, businesses, industry. Okay, so it works similar, in a similar way, but it's, it's cheap to produce. Okay, you can produce a lot of electricity from it without too much cost. Um, so it's got low running costs and low extraction costs. So actually you get the fuel, it doesn't cost much money, you just need to dig it out of the ground. It is reliable. Okay. It's reliable. You you know how much electricity it's going to generate at any given time. Okay. However, it does produce greenhouse gases. Okay. It has produced the majority of the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere today. Okay. Carbon dioxide is the main greenhouse gas it produces, but it, there are others. And um, so carbon dioxide is the main gas that's given off. Okay. That's a big disadvantage. It is non-renewable. At one point it will run out. Okay, the estimates are about that 100 years, give or take. Okay, it depends on how quickly it's used and depends on how quickly other sources of it are um, discovered, but probably about 100 years and it'll all be gone if we use it at our current rate. Okay, so it's going to run out, it's non-renewable. It produces um, other pollutants when, when the fuel is burnt, um, sulfur dioxide, which leads to acid rain. Okay, acid rain can damage wildlife, has a massive impact on fish in particular. Um, so, fossil fuels, you need to know about these. Okay. Next one, last one. We've got nuclear power. So this is an example of a nuclear power reactor and then connected to the grid. So we've got the, the containment structure here. This is where the, the radioactive materials will be. So we've got these, 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 this reactor vessel, which would contain the, the uranium. Okay. Is typical, which when it undergoes nuclear fission, and you can learn about that more in the atomic structure units next year, maybe in year 11, but I think it's next year, um, when it undergoes nuclear fission, it produces heat. And that heat heats up this um, this fluid. This, this well, not a lot of the time it's water, sometimes it's other materials, but it heats up this, um, this, this fluid here, which heats up water, the water turns into steam, steam turns into, uh, steam turns a turbine, which turns a generator. Then the, the, the cooled steam here is condensed back into water and it's reused. And the generator transfers that kinetic energy in the turbine into electrical energy that powers the city. Okay. Now it's incredibly reliable. You know how much electricity you're going to generate. Okay. It is reliable and it doesn't produce greenhouse gases. There'll be some involved in the building, the construction of the power plant, but when it's running, once it's built, it doesn't produce any greenhouse gases. Okay. Those are the two big um, uh, advantages. And it produces a lot of electricity for the size of the plant. Okay. So it is, it is a, a worthwhile use of, of, of energy resources. Good one. However, there's a very big startup cost. So it takes a lot of money to safely build the power plants. And even more so, it takes a lot of money and resources to safely turn them off and decommission them. Okay, so when you take into account this cost, it is expensive. It's an expensive form of power generation. There is a chance of massive disasters, such as Chernobyl or Fukushima, okay, where you have um, a power plant melting down and distributing nuclear waste um, around the area. Um, 
they're unlikely. There's not been very many of them at all, but there is a chance that could happen. Okay. Um, disposing of the waste, get ri getting rid of the spent nuclear material is dangerous and that takes a long time. Okay. And it is expensive because of that. So those are some of the advantages and disadvantages of nuclear power. Okay. Now, your first, your first task, you need to make a summary of biofuels, nuclear power, and fossil fuels. Now that can be a spider diagram for each one. It could be a big table. It could be a poster. It could be a leaflet. It could be any creative way you can think of <coughs> that will generate, that will um, allow you to show um, those three types of energy resource. You need to have a sketch of what's happening. You need to have a little brief description, a couple of sentences on how it works. So what's the process behind it? You need to have at least two advantages and two disadvantages for each type of energy generation. Okay, that's your first task. Your second task is to give a go of these practice um, fact recall questions. Okay, so first job, summary of the three types. Second job, we need to give these fact questions a go. Okay, now I've got the answers on the next slide and these are going to be attached as well to the class charts. So pause it until you've given these um, these questions a go and then you can use the answers to check your answers and give them a little bit of a mark. Okay, so here is the answer slide. If you don't need it yet, pause. Now, okay, and here's the answer slide. Okay, um, I hope everyone's doing well at home. I hope you're all taking care of each other. Take care and goodbye.